What's up guys, it's Ben here bringing you an F1 2013 game news video on what we know so far based on the tweets of Steve Hood, the creative designer from Codemasters F1 games. You can follow him on Twitter, I'll leave a link to his Twitter in the description. And also the gameplays in the background are by Benino106 and Renewable Button. It's just a F1 2012 game mod with uh, the 2013 livery, so you can sort of have an idea of what the game will look like next year just with the new liveries, but of course the HUD and everything and the shape of the cars will be a little bit different, but you know, it's better than looking at the 2012 cars. So let's get into this video and I uh, hope you enjoy it. So after doing a bit of stalking of Steve's uh, Twitter, um, I pulled up nine tweets of his that he's uh, mentioned about the game, and I think they're pretty important as to whether um, you'll see some things in the game. Um, the first one is um, from the 24th of April. He says he had a quick 25% race at China today. He finished third behind Lee Mather and hard-charging Mark Webber and struggled with an oversteering Ferrari. Now, the part about that that stands out to me the most is the oversteering Ferrari. Now, that tells me that the handling model is going to be changed somewhat to favor oversteer um, a little bit like F1 2011 but you know with the 2012 characteristics uh, as you know 2012 was pretty understeery and it favored um, the controller as most understeering handling models do uh, unfortunately with a oversteering handling model that will favor towards the wheel again which I kind of feel is a bit unfair as you know, there's been two games now where the wheel has been faster than the pad and I think the balance of things was pretty good on 2012, but hopefully they can incorporate an oversteering handling model that doesn't hurt the pad users too much. Now looking at the next tweet is a question from Connor McDonough. I'm sorry I can't pronounce your name, but the tweet says, There was a big difference between the handling model for 2010 to 2012. Will 2013 be similar to 2012? or will you be changing it? And Steve replies with, similar to 2012, but only better, more feel, more control, more wrist, and more realistic, basically. Um, yeah, he's right there. 2012 didn't really have much feel or, um, you know, much feedback to it. I mean, from, from my point of view, I didn't really have any feeling over the car as to whether I was going to spin or not when I'd go over a bump or something, or go over a curb and... Um, I'd lose the back end and I'd have no um, no warning about when it was going to happen. If you play the game without any game sounds, you'll have absolutely no idea as to when you'll spin. The only um, cue you have is the tire screeching, and that's pretty much it, which is pretty poor. There should be like a feedback part to it. The like the controller or the wheel needs to vibrate before you spin the car. I mean, the the wheels should you know, vibrate pretty violently if you're gonna, you know, lose the back end. Because um, I'd only imagine that that's the sort of feeling you get um, right before you spin or something. But by the looks of it, it's going to be much better, and, you know, um, it's going to be much better uh, overall, pretty much. Now, the next tweet is from Callum, and he says, Will the tires on F1 2013 be as hard to deal with as what they are in real life? And Steve says, well, we've been playing with the tyre wear management, trying to make it harder, and some like it, but some don't, just like in real life. And that tells me that um, tyre wear is going to be affected by driving styles and how you uh, treat the car, the heat, treat the tyres. Uh, if you punish the tyres, then the tyres will punish you. Uh, sorry to say it, but it will be more realistic in that sense. Um, hopefully, setups and... Um, driving styles do come into it, because on 2010, 2012, sorry, uh, you could run a really aggressive qualifying setup, or a really tyre preservation sort of style setup, and your tyres would still go off at the same rate as, uh, as the um, comparing setups and, you know, different driving styles and whatever, and it still went off at the same rate, so hopefully on the next game, um, it's much more realistic in that sense. Next tweet is from Marcel, and he says, Hey, my first tweet, is it possible for F1 2013 to get more help from the team to prepare, prepare a good car setup? And Steve replies with, Not in 2013. It's quite a complex thing to do, owing to the huge variation in player ability. 
The defaults are fine though. Now that tells me that the steering, not the steering, the setup model uh, that they have on 2012 is going to remain the same for 2013, unfortunately. I mean, it is a fairly simplistic sort of approach that they have, and it does seem to work pretty well, apart from the 1-1 wings and, you know, the the tyre wear and everything, but with what's been said so far, I think they're going to fix that up while still remaining the same with the setup base that they have, so, um, you know, it's looking good so far, but we can only wait until uh, the next game to see if it's worked or not, but I have faith in Codemasters and I think they will uh, do a stellar job next year because they really are listening to the community this time around. Next tweet is from Craig Dickinson and he says, How difficult would it be to include a customize your own helmet feature into the next or following F1 game? And Steve says he's looking to bring it into the game one day soon. Now people have been calling for this for a long time, uh, especially lately, now that they're looking for something new to the game. I mean, a lot of people want to customize their own helmets like they see on the PC with their mods and stuff, and it looks really good. So I think you will see it in the next game. That's just my educated guess, because it doesn't look like it'll be that hard to implement, and it'll make a lot of people happy. Um, and it shouldn't be too hard to implement, so my bet is it will be in the game. Next tweet is from Mr. X, and he said, Hi, what's... What about the corner cutting in 2013? Hopefully the tracks, curbs, grass, curbs and grass will en enable driving to be more similar in real F1. Steve says, yes, that bugs me, so it's being looked at. And, yeah, so basically Codemasters are going to crack down on the penalty system, or well, not the penalty system, the application of penalties for corner cutting. Um, corners like Ascari, where you can just fly over the corner and not get away with a penalty, um, that'll be that'll be fixed up now, hopefully, so that if you go over there, you will um, be punished for it. And you know, there are some corners on the on the game that are even too tough for corner cutting, like the penultimate corner at Austin, Texas, where you run like a millimeter off the track on the outside there, and you get a warning, which I completely don't really understand. So, hopefully, they bounce it out a little bit more and make it more harsh for people who abuse the track limits. Uh, especially at tracks like Canada, Melbourne, and Monza. So, yeah, look for that to be much more fair and much more balanced for the next game. Next tweet is from Jackstar, and he says, Can you please put GP2 in F1 2013? I think it would really add to the career mode experience. But Steve Hood has flat out denied that by saying GP2 isn't allowed in the F1 title. And that's due to the licensing um, that Codemasters have for the game. Uh, GP2 is a separate uh, racing series to F1. I mean, it's a feeder series. I mean, it provides uh, young drivers to the F1 uh, series, but it's a completely s different uh, series altogether, if you know what I mean. So it doesn't really fit 100% with them. So with Codemasters, as long as they're making F1 games, I don't see them making or adding other series into their game, unfortunately. Now, second last tweet here we have from Steve Hood. Again, it's, he says, uh, Wow, not a great thing for Seb to be saying. Overtake on him then. One for a future F1 game. You heard it here first. Now he's referring to the Malaysia incident between him and Weber, where they had the whole multi-21 thing. Um, what he's trying to hint at here is you might see a scenario mode where you're being Sebastian Vettel and you're in the final laps of the race and you've got to make your way around Mark Webber despite the team telling you to hold back or something like that or you maybe you're Mark Webber and you're trying to hold off Seb for the final few laps and you're trying to rewrite history that sort of thing. I think it'll be a pretty cool game mode um, sort of scenarios mode, probably replacing champions mode which, are, which was a bit unloved on 2012 so would be a good addition, and I think um, there'll be plenty more moments like that throughout the season to add into the game. So, final tweet we have from Francesco Pezzo, and he says, Hi Steve, any news on F1 2013? And he says, No news on future F1 games as of yet. Uh, I realise we, we normally talk around this time of year, but this time it's different. Now, this is the most encouraging tweet to me, because... Um, they're taking a different approach uh, with regards to marketing and, you know, just presentation of the game. I think they're taking a more professional approach, uh, trying to focus more on the game itself 
and just fix up the flaws and just make the uh, customers more generally happy. So I applaud Codemasters on, on this sort of stance. Um, yeah, I think the game will be much better this time around because they've learned a lot from the last three releases and they really are trying to branch out to the community, asking them questions, you know, promoting their videos, that sort of thing, and they're really getting the feedback from everyone else just to make the game much better um, so that we can all see a real complete game. But that's pretty much it from this video. Um, I hope you liked it. I tried to cover things that weren't covered in previous videos, so I had to remake this video, unfortunately. And, you know, I didn't have to change too much up because there was only one or two tweets that I had to take out. So, yeah. Until my next video, guys, I will see you later. Bye-bye.